Most contractors don't even realize this, but these common website mistakes can turn visitors away before they even know what your services are. These mistakes could be costing you potential jobs and you may not even know it. In this video, I'm gonna dive into the top five mistakes that contractors are making on their website, and most importantly, show you how to fix them. A lot of contracting companies' websites list all their services on like a single page with just bullet point form. And this is a huge mistake, and I see it happening all the time. And there's really two main reasons why your website needs to have a dedicated page for every single one of the services that you provide. First, prospects wanna research what it will be like if they hire you for a specific service. When you actually have a page on your website explaining the individual service, you're actively educating and building trust with the prospect. The goal of the page is to excite prospects while educating them so they eventually turn into leads. Now, the second reason that you want an individual page for each service is it's great for SEO. It's your way of signaling to Google that you actually provide a specific service in a particular area. Google is super smart, but it still needs data from you to learn more about your company. So when you're not actually showing off individual pages on your site for each service, Google doesn't really quite know what services you provide. I wanna highlight a few things on this page and the first being the popular upgrades section. Now this section is super important because it's gonna highlight the common features that people like to add into their kitchens. Now, most contractors that I've talked to, they feel like they're like nickel and diming customers when asking, what upgrades do you want? What do you wanna have in your kitchen? So when you actually have a section like this on the website, it's gonna allow prospects to actually feel like they're shopping independently and you don't have to bring it up as a contractor. This almost allows it to be like a menu that they get to pick and choose what they want. Next is gonna be the portfolio section of the page. I mean, what better way to get prospects excited and build trust than by showing that the proof is in the pudding. The portfolio section on these pages, they should have enough pictures to show a variety of projects, but I wouldn't really suggest highlighting more than maybe a dozen because once you start to go too many photos, it's gonna slow the web page down and actually feel overwhelming to the consumer. And the last thing is making sure that you have a FAQ section on each of these service pages. Naturally, just like in conversation, prospects are gonna have a ton of questions about the service, and this is a fantastic opportunity to proactively answer what they're actually thinking about, which may be the thing that's stopping them from reaching out and becoming a lead. So now that we've covered the importance of structuring your service pages, let's talk through another major issue, the quality of your website's visuals, AKA photos and videos. Your website acts as a digital storefront for the business. If you're showing off photos and videos that look amateurish, it's gonna cause prospects to doubt the overall level of professionalism that your company has. People's perception becomes the reality, so we don't wanna risk giving off the wrong impression by having bad photos and videos. Here are two different photos of the same project from the same angle. Now, this is actually my dad's house, and when we were doing all the marketing, we actually had a client that had a budget for outdoor lighting between six and 13 grand. And when we showed her the actual professionally photographed images, her budget immediately was at 13 grand, and that's what we ended up installing in our house. And that was proof to everybody, man, the power of professional photos is so understated. Now, what if you don't have amazing photos of your projects like this? You can use stock photos, and we do it with some of our clients, but we just wanna be cautious when we're doing it. The goal of photos are to excite prospects and build trust with them. So if your photos are like obviously stock images, it's gonna take away from any trust that you're wanting to build with prospects because people know it's not actually your work. Now, even with the right visuals and content, the site isn't gonna get traction if people can't find it. Imagine you spent a ton of time and money on a beautifully designed store, but nobody ever visits because they can't find it. That's exactly what happens when your website is not actually optimized for search engines. Now, there are over 200 factors that go into SEO, but I wanna focus on two quick and pretty easy changes that you can actually make right now. The first one is title tags. The title tag tells Google what your page is about and how it should appear in search results. For example, if your specific page is about kitchen remodeling in Atlanta, your title tag should say kitchen remodeling in Atlanta. It's that straightforward. Now, the second SEO component to add is the main headline or what's called the H1. The H1 is the main headline that 
people are gonna see when they get to this page, and it also tells Google what the page is about, just like that title tag. Now, you don't need to be an SEO expert to get this stuff right, but just these small tweaks make a big difference in helping people actually find your website online. And now that your website is easier to find, the next step is to make sure that visitors don't feel overwhelmed when they actually get to the site. As business owners, we sometimes try to pack so much information that is saying, this is why you should hire me into a website that it's actually so chaotic and it has the opposite effect. I think we just think that if we give people tons of options that they're gonna love us because they get to choose their own adventure, but that's actually not always the case. If we have an abundance of options, it's gonna require so much effort to choose and it ends up leaving us feel like unsatisfied with the choice that we make. This is true on websites, especially when it comes to menus because it's, it's overwhelming, it's frustrating, and it's just not the experience that we want to give people. This is a client of ours and we're actually redoing the website right now, but when you come in, you can see it looks like you do every single service under the sun. You've got your social tabs up here. We don't know where we wanna click, and when you come in, it doesn't feel smooth and easy to work with him because their perception is you've got so many options, you gotta figure out what you wanna do. So on the new site, we're trying to simplify and make it really straightforward when you come in. You've only really got a few options to choose from. It still gets you to the same end result, but instead of you directly going to that page yourself, we're actually guiding you, which will provide a much better experience as a user, which in turn will make the user more likely to actually turn into a lead. And finally, if your website is well organized and it's easy to navigate, it still needs one super important element to truly build trust. And that is something we like to call social proof. Now, the higher the price point of whatever service you're providing is, the more trust that needs to be built up with the prospect. Let's pretend that you're wanting to find a new job at a new company. The whole goal of a resume is to land you an interview. Now, if you just submitted a resume that has a bunch of buzzwords like, you know, you work well in groups, you work well individually, you're growth oriented, they don't usually land well with hiring managers because compared to somebody else's resume that actually highlights work experience that shows that you do those things, the buzzwords don't really land that well. Your website needs to be the exact same thing. One of the best ways and easiest ways to show off and show that you're legit is actually having full featured project pages where you're walking through individual projects you've already completed. So when we come in, we really wanna highlight three individual things. The first is that we wanna just talk about what the before problem was that the client was facing. This is gonna give us a good foundation for where we're about to take their project. Next, we wanna highlight what does it look like to actually work with you. This is gonna show that you actually have a plan and that you know what you're doing. And finally, this is the most important part, show off the final transformation of the project itself. Both in video and photo form, we want this to really pop and it really shows a true transformation where people were coming in with this old boring room and now you stepped in and you made it look beautiful. And the best part about this is instead of having a whole gallery of different images from different projects, this shows cohesion where somebody can look at this project and actually conceptualize what you did in that room and that will go a long way in building trust. So those are the top five mistakes that I'm consistently seeing for contracting websites. Now, the last thing we talked about was the actual feature project page, and I just did a full video breakdown explaining how to create one for yourself. They're super important pages. In fact, of all the websites that we've built, they are the number two most traffic page behind the homepage. So go ahead, check it out, because you're gonna love how it lands when prospects see it.